Hello, and welcome to another episode of Lemur's Corner. I am Lemur, and today we are talking about New World. Uh, specifically, this video is going to be breaking down some helpful tips for new players coming into the game for the first time, and to talk about a couple things that I commonly saw in Global, and questions that people have about the game, and I'm gonna go ahead and do it. It's gonna be a lot of menu talk, it's not gonna be about specific combat stuff, they cover the combat stuff really, really specifically, um, but this is where I wanna talk about some of the little catches and the little things you might have missed or you might have questions about where to find things, things like that. So we are actually in here on the open beta. Uh, this is going to help us out a lot to talk about it. Um, these might change slightly between game launch, but some of these key tricks aren't going to be in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually first going to zoom out uh, on the map, and I wanna talk about the map. So understanding what everything means and what happens. So when we get into the game initially, it's all gonna be these white areas where no one has control of them. In order to gain control, you have to clear out all the corruption uh, and then go ahead and take the outpost, uh, just as a note for everybody um, that's in there, and you have to take out the main area. That allows you to have control of it and get control over it, just as a note for everybody. Uh, so that's what that does. If somebody has control of the areas, you can see it's either green, it's um, purple or yellow based on what faction you're a part of. So purple is for syndicates, green is for marauders, and yellow is uh, covenant. You can change your factions every 120 days as a note. Uh, but within that, you can see there are two bars underneath it or an upcoming invasion note. These two bars underneath it mean the influence, uh, another... Um, uh, another faction has done within there in order to initiate some kind of invasion of war to attempt to take over uh, the points of uh, interest or the territories from the other faction. Uh, and you can see here, this one's got upcoming invasion. It takes about two days normally for that invasion to go through. Uh, but on top of it, you can see here, this is all owned by Purple. Um, and that's awesome that they did that. But you can see here uh, that they're invading it. So you can see here, like the Purple here says the Syndicate's taking over. Green is Covenant. You do that by doing your faction PVP quests, which we'll get to in a moment. So continuing on understanding the map, if you do want to take this over and cause influence, you need to have access to the fort in order to initiate the attack, and it does cost 15,000 gold uh, in order to initiate the attack on the settlement to allow you to do that. From there, um, there's a couple points that I want to explain to everybody that you understand. One, red dots mean corruption area, so you can go ahead and go in there. Uh, two, uh, question marks are uncharted territories. Um, the rest are just marks to let you know where they're at. You do get experience for exploring those. Uh, three is understanding fast travel shrines. Those exist and you can actually see them by the white streak of light. They shoot through the air if you're trying to look for those. Next is we're going to zoom into the map a little bit and you're going to see a lot of different things that I want to talk about. First off, um, if I highlight over this section right here and I click on this, this is going to be um, Everfall. This is uh, Perseus. But if you're inside one of these dotted bot line boxes, that's a specific territory. And if you have a quest that's inside of there, and like let's say you've got a quest to kill sheep over here, right? And you have to kill the churro sheep over here. You come over here. Um, this whole boxed in area is that section. So you can examine that whole year, not just where that number is on there uh, when you're doing those quests. Uh, and that's what those dotted lines are. Second, you're gonna see different types of terrain. So you can see like this is forest type, this is grasslands type. And what does that mean? Well, specifically, if you click on resource locations inside the map, it actually tells you if it's grassland, you got a good chance to get fibers and hemp and spices. If it's forest, you got a good chance to get some green wood. You got fibers and uh, more spices. You can get some fruit uh, or food in there and stuff like that. And as I said, shrubland, marshland, uh, coastal hills give you access to flint. Beaches give you flint. You know, all that kind of stuff. And that's all in here based on the little uh, logos within the dotted lines. Uh, some of you are probably like, well, what's this blank area right here? Uh, well, if you actually zoom in, you can kind of see it's actually more of a highlands area. Uh, precious metals, boulders, and stuff like that. Uh, and then if you go to the beach, you can actually see the beach is located right here. Um, you can sometimes see there's hills in there, which would be on there as an access for a shrubland or possibly hill ends and then beach for flint, uh, just as a note within the map. But going back up here, I want to talk about one more thing, and that's within each of the hamlets. That's one of the main towns in there. Uh, if you zoom in enough, you can actually see uh, where everything is. So you can know where the kitchen is or the outfitting station, the loom. You can look where your faction uh, purse representative is 
is. You can see where the town board is and all that kind of stuff. Which, speaking of town board, those are the where you're going to get your missions. So until level 25, you're going to need to do faction missions and town board missions. So you once you get the choice to pick a faction, otherwise, while you're doing all your other main quests, you want to hit up that town project board. You're going to go hit that up. It's going to say, go collect 1,000 wood or collect 50 wood or make three potions or something of that nature. You accept it. You do it. You do the main quest. You turn it back in and you turn it in. And that's how you're going to gain your first 25 levels pretty easily out there. Uh, once you have access to faction quests, you're going to do those with it. There's two sets within the faction, PvE and PvP. But let's go ahead and show you what those are actually going to look like in game, uh, just so that you're not confused on what's happening and what's going on. So first, we're going to go over here and run and grab the faction guy. One of the favorite things I have is they have a marker where you can see through buildings and it shows you right where your faction guy is based on the faction logo on there. Um, I'm Marauder, so that's going to be the Marauder's logo right there. I'm going to talk to him and open my faction board. As I said, PvE's on this side, and that's that front row. PvP's on the bottom side. You get uh, experience for the PvP, but on top of it, you do get territory standing and also increasing your influence, which you can see the percentages up here at the top. Um, you can see at 100% it enables you to declare war on the home place and also gets you rep with your territory. Then you do the rep quest and you get access to better gear uh, and things of that nature. Uh, I'm also going to talk about territory standing here in a moment um, to discuss what that is, but I want to go ahead and show you what the town board looks like because outside of that faction syndicate, this is the other place you're going to get a majority of your quests. You might get side quests, which will come up as little yellow boxes, um, just like this one right here. Over here, you can see it yellow boxes. Those yellow boxes indicate that there's a side quest there for you to complete and do an attempt to do, and those are normally yellow. Uh, you'll see them on your sidebar as yellow, uh, and then on top of it on the right, you'll see the ones that are completed in green, uh, and if they are not completed and they are some sort of faction board quest or something like that, they'll be in purple. So with that, this is what the town board looks like right here. Project board, you open it up, and as I said, there's different things. Um, initially, if you're on the game at launch, you're only going to have access to town upkeep. That's cooking, you know, all this kind of stuff. You can see it gets like get 40 steel ingots, get 40 feathers, whatever it is. Uh, after that, it's going to be about upgrading um, devices. Once someone is taking, once a company is taking control of the Hamlet, or Hamlet, uh, once they've taken control, then they access these where everyone can do these and turn them in, uh, so that you have access to more quests. So that's really all this comes down to on this one. Uh, with all that being said, though, this is the main town board. That's not the only place you can talk to them. You can actually talk to the town leader, uh, which you can see here in the back. Uh, they will also give you the town board or community board on here also, and it's the exact same thing. So just as a note um, outside of there. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the territory standing. So we've talked about map location, key points, understanding what those points are, talking about resource locations, where to find them. Um, on that note, I did not talk about the fact that if you go into character under trade skills and you go into... Uh, let me just stop my character from running really quick. Uh, if you go into character under trade skills and you go ahead and look under gathering, let's say I want to figure out exactly what hemp looks like. Well, if you go in here, you can actually sometimes see exactly what the plant looks like. So when you're looking for it, you know what you're looking for. Uh, and, and you have an idea of what the nature of the stuff you're looking for is. Same thing with mining. Mining's the same way. It shows you what silver, iron looks like, oil, gold, alchemy stones, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, and if you get close to it enough, it will tell you. Uh, but that's the only thing I really wanted to cover in here was that you can have access to those kind of ponds and they'll talk to you uh, about all that information in here. Um, and so now let's talk about faction standing. That's probably one of the more important things that are going to happen or territory standing, not faction standing. Uh, in type of every place that you go, when you do quests, you kill things, all that kind of stuff, you gain territory standing. Uh, this allows you to get certain buffs while you're in there. Uh, I'm going to jump into a low one for myself just to show you. Uh, so I've gained one or two levels uh, within first light, um, and I've gotten decided to make it a 5% increase in territory standing from first light and decrease the crafting fee by 5% inside the first light territory. But as I said, the more and more you're in there. So for example, I was in Monarch Buffs a lot. You can see I have a lot more buffs when I'm in there, uh, not including the fact that if my 
faction owns that territory, I get so many more buffs and so many good things that I have an opportunity to get. Um, so that's one of the things you need to know is that the more you're in a territory doing things, you get more benefits. Uh, and also to buy houses, you need to be at least 15 uh, standing within that territory. Uh, so just please note that, that you're going to need to do that. Um, and you can do all that kind of fun stuff in there. Um, on top of it, with speaking of territories and standings and stuff like that, there are three start zones actually uh, that you have access to. There's Windsward, First Light, Monarchs, Bluff. Oh, I'm sorry, there's four, and Everfall. Uh, normally they are kind of right here uh, on the edge. You can see these are here. So that's Everfall. Uh, right here is where Monarchs Bluff starting area is. Uh, is down in this general oh yeah down in this general area first light is down here you can normally see it by the little watchtower i'm sorry i said monarchs was here monarchs is here i apologize i was looking at it like what no that's not right you can normally see it by the the watchtower uh is really what you're really looking for uh and then the uh second one ever falls over there and windsward is down here um just as a note for everybody those are kind of the four starting areas that you can randomly generate and get uh which makes it hard sometimes to get for your friends and to hook up with your friends uh but roughly around level like 12 or 13 you should be able to move on uh, as soon as you get access to the quest uh that's says you need your faction rep to a certain level in order to uh, continue forward, that's when you know you've reached the point where you can leave and go to a different one. So if you all want to group up in one location, that's definitely an option for you. Uh, but I would just recommend um, just doing the best you can in that one area if you're decided to do it. Uh, if your faction's getting it over, that's great. If you want to move, that's your choice too. Uh, so, but these are all, as I said, this is all new player stuff and stuff I want to talk about um, to help you out within there. Um, if you feel like I've missed something or you have questions about something, make sure you guys leave that down in the comments and let me know. Uh, and I will try to respond to those as quickly and as rapidly as I can. Uh, but sometimes they come in a little crazy, so I might miss it or something like that. And I do apologize. Uh, but continuing on in here, um, that's where you can buy homes. You can see it. you need at least a level 30 uh, Everfall standing in order to purchase it and a bunch of gold. Uh, so, for example, I have enough gold to buy a $5,000 home. The problem is uh, I cannot do it because I do not have the faction standing. From there, everything is basically crafting and going through and finding things. Uh, one big note I want to make is you can craft items from outside your storage. So if the item's in your storage, you can craft them in the other thing. Um, so as long as it's in this storage area, I can go ahead and craft them over here and have access to them uh, to go ahead and craft them. So like I could create flint arrows because it says I have flint and greenwood, but if you look at my inventory, I don't have any of that. So just as a note. Second point I wanna make is getting, the most important thing is getting your engineering uh, items up. So we're gonna go over here, I was just at it, um, is getting iron. Iron's gonna be the best thing you can get right away so you can get some iron bars. Those iron bars allow you to quickly get upgrading to your gathering tools. I highly recommend trying to get those up right away. Uh, perfect examples, if we look at the, mine, the flint mining ax, uh, it's gather speeds 100%. If you got the iron one, it's 125. It's going to be 125. My engineering is higher. Therefore, I have a chance of pulling a 130 or 160 out of the possibility, uh, which would be level nine. Uh, if I want to change it, I can make it more. But the point is, is if getting that quick iron tool out really quick saves you 25% of your time on harvesting. So make sure you get those right away. Those are one of those big things. If you've got a group of people going with it, make sure you have one person doing engineering. It's probably one of the most important skills uh, in the game that you could have someone at a high level at because it means they can sit over there and just be like, here, have a level, you know, it's going to increase your gathering speed by 300%. You know, it just make sure you have that person there that's able to do that. Um, outside of that, really the rest of it is just making sure you do those quests as we talk about. So I want to give a quick overview again of what I talked about. So remember, we talked about territories. We talked about where to find things, what they look like. We talked about resource locations, zooming in on the map to see where things are within the hamlet so you can run around and check them out. Uh, we talked about faction standing, wars, taking over factions, uh, all that good information. Um, there is one more thing I actually did want to note, um, and that is actually under attributes. Uh, so there are some weapons that are listed uh, under two attributes. So a perfect example of that would be the hatchet. It says it scales with strength and dexterity, and the hatchet says it scales with strength and dexterity. 
Well, which one is more? Well, actually, there's always a primary and a secondary when it has both. Uh, and you can tell by the darkness of the symbol. You see how this one's got the nice white light line? It pops more. That means it's the primary. And dexterity is the secondary. Same with the rapier. Same with the musket. Uh, and same with the spear. The spear scales off dexterity. Uh, it doesn't mean that it doesn't get points from strength. It's just a reduced number of points. So with all that being said, make sure you guys go ahead and check stuff out. Make sure you look at it. If you have questions, ask. I've, I've, I would say overall the community is quite good and quite nice and very helpful in there. Uh, and there's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, I do want to note within your settings, make sure you double check your key bindings and make sure you have swap weapon activated. So I have mine. It's on mouse five. Make sure you double check to make sure that there is an actual key binding in there. The first time I plays during the closed, uh, it did not have one. So make sure you check that. So you could just click a button and swap your weapons really, really fast. With all that being said, I'm super excited for this game to come out. Um, we do have a announcement. If you're catching this uh, before the launch of the game, the game is already launched. This next part does not involve you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. But uh, if it's before launch, we will be announcing something big on Monday before the game. It comes out on September 28th. We will be coming, uh, launching a, a special announcement on Monday, the 27th in order to show a couple things to people and some really cool stuff that's coming up for us. Uh, and then I will start a countdown stream somewhere in that on Monday, uh, counting down. Uh, I might do some Q&A periods where maybe we talk about what people's plans are, what servers they're going to, the information that's come out. Uh, I might even do some other streams about New World Q&A, talking about other things that I might just shoot straight to video and post those. So make sure you guys subscribe so you can get content that's coming out as it's coming out as soon as we know about it. Uh, I'm super excited for this game. I'm all in. I'm really excited for it. I hope all of you are too. Uh, and we will see you all soon out there. Uh, with that being said, we are looking for people for our company. Uh, we are talking about building our own company. We might join one. So either A, if you have someone that has running a company, you guys need six, seven good players, let me know. Uh, go ahead and jump in our Discord and you can message us. Again, you can check us out in our Discord. But on top of it, if you want to join a company with us, same thing. Go in our Discord, hang out with us. We'll see what numbers we kind of get and maybe we'll make a decision within there if we're going to do a big company and run it. I probably won't end up running it. I might be like an officer, but I won't be the main head guy. Uh, I got enough stuff going on as is. But with all of that, I'm super excited for this game. I'm super excited to come out. If you guys have questions, leave them down in the comments down below. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, especially if it's helped you. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications for more New World content and all that kind of stuff out there. But as always, I hope you all have a fantastic day. And we see you on the next episode of Lemur's Corner.